Hi everyone, how are you doing? Welcome to Storytime with Gammon. I just want to pull up um, my group so I can see if you guys are on here. Okay, so let me do that. Maybe, maybe I do do that. I don't know. Anyway, how's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. We're going to read tonight from my absolute favorite, favorite, oh, wait, wait, let me look at that. Favorite book as a child. And that is this book. And I'm pretty sure that my love for poetry, you can see this is a pretty well-worn book came from this book and Dr. Seuss combined. So if you're on live with me, guys, say hello. Look, it even has like my little writing inside. See that from like third grade. Anyway, actually it says Madeline first and then cross that says Meg. So this book has been very well used and we still have it because I cherish it. So let me know who you are. And if you have a child with you, put their names in so I can say hello to them. And I want to read two poems to you tonight, not real long poems, because, you know, I'm still recovering. So it's actually hard for me to, um, to go live, believe it or not. I think it's the adrenaline. However, tomorrow I'm going to come on probably around. I don't know, maybe 11 or something like that and talk about my heart attack because what I have to tell you is super important for all women to know, okay? So let's get reading. And if you're on YouTube, guys, hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and we'd love to have you part of our YouTube family. All right, so let's get reading. The first book I'm going, the first book, I'm not reading this whole book. Thank goodness you'll be here all night. The first poem I'm going to read is The Elf and the Dormouse by Oliver Hereford. And here's his little picture. And here's the poem. Whoops. Whoops. Sorry. Under a toadstool crept a wee elf out of the rain to shelter himself. Under the toadstool sound asleep sat a big dormouse all in a heap. Trembled the wee elf, frightened and yet, fearing to fly away lest he got wet. To the next shelter, maybe a mile, sudden the wee elf smiled a wee smile. Tugged till the toadstool toppled in two, holding it over him gaily he flew. Soon he was safe home, dry as could be. Soon woke the dormouse, good gracious me, where is my toadstool, loud he lamented, and that's how umbrellas first were invented. And there he is with his toadstool. I love the poems in this book. Oh, and this book is actually um, selected, the poems are selected by Lewis Untermeyer. This is a great book, and I hope they still manufacture it because I really feel like you should all work, get this book. It's fabulous. It took us, me and my sisters and my brother, through our entire childhood, as you can see. Hi, Lee. Okay, the next story I want to read to you, the next poem, is The Tale of Custard the Dragon. And this poem is by Ogden Nash, who is absolutely my father's favorite favorite poet. So we heard a lot of Abdin Nash poetry as we grew up. So here is the tale of Custer the Dragon. Now, Mr. Untermeyer does some comments on these stories, and here he writes, all story poems aren't meant to be taken seriously. The next one certainly is not. It requires that you believe in a girl who owned a pet dragon. And of all things, a dragon named Custard. Even if you suspect that the tale isn't true, you will find Custard the most amusing and most amazing dragon you ever met. So let's tell the tale of Custard the Dragon. 
Belinda lived in a little white house with a little black kitten and a little gray mouse and a little yellow dog and a little red wagon and a really oh truly oh little pet dragon. There he is, see? Now the name of the little black kitten was Ink and the little gray mouse, she called her Blink and the little yellow dog was sharp as mustard, but the dragon was a coward and she called him Custard. Custard the dragon had big sharp teeth and spikes on top of him and scales underneath. Mouth like a fireplace chimney for a nose and really oh truly oh daggers on his toes. Belinda was a brave as a barrel full of bears and ink and blink chased lions down the stairs. Mustard was as brave as a tiger in a rage but Custard cried for a nice safe cage. Belinda tickled him. She tickled him unmerciful. Ink, Blink, and Mustard, they rudely called him Percival. They all sat laughing in the little red wagon at the really oh truly -o cowardly dragon. Belinda giggled till she shook the house and Blink said, weak, which is giggling for a mouse. Ink and Mustard rudely asked his age when Custard cried for a nice safe cage. Suddenly, suddenly they heard a nasty sound and Mustard growled and they all looked around. Meowch cried Ink and ooh cried Belinda for there was a pirate climb, climbing in the window. Pistol in his left hand, pistol in his right and he held in his teeth in cutlass bright. His beard was black. One leg was wood. It was clear that the pirate meant no good. Do you see him? Here he comes. There's, there's the pirate and there's Custard. Belinda paled and she cried, help, help. But Mustard fled with a terrified yelp. Ink trickled down to the bottom of the household and Little Mouse blinked strategically mousehold. But up jumped Custard, snorting like an engine, clashed his tail like irons in a dungeon. With a clatter and a clank and a jangling squirm, he went at the pirate like a robin at a worm. The pirate gaped at Belinda's dragon and gulped some grog from his pocket flagon. He fired two bullets, but they didn't hit, and Custard gobbled him every bit. Belinda embraced him, Mustard licked him, no one mourned for his pirate victim. Ink and Blink in glee did gyrate around the dragon that ate the pirate. Belinda still lives in her little white house with her little black kitten and her little gray mouse and her little yellow dog and her little red wagon and her really oh truly oh little pet dragon. Belinda is as brave as a barrel full of bears and ink and blink chase lions down the stairs. Mustard is a bra as brave as a tiger in a rage, but custard keeps crying for a nice safe cage. And there is custard the dragon. And this book is all full of sweet, wonderful, fun poems. Some you may know, some you may not. And I'm going to read one last one, Escape at Bedtime by Robert Louis Stevenson. So you can help, help you guys get ready. The lights from the parlor and kitchen shone out through the blinds and the windows and bars. And high overhead and all moving about, there were thousands of millions of stars. There ne'er were such thousands of leaves on a tree, nor of people in church or the park, as the crowds of the stars that looked down upon me and that glittered and winked in the dark. The dog and the plow and the hunter and all and the star of the sailor and Mars, these shone in the sky and the pail by the wall would be half full of water and stars. They saw me at last and they chased me with cries and they soon had me packed into bed. But the glory kept shining and bright in my eyes and the stars going round in my head. There he is looking at the stars, 
by Robert Louis Stevenson, another fabulous poet and storyteller. Okay, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed these poems. And I will be reading more poems because I love poetry. And I love writing it. And I love reading it. And I hope you enjoyed it, too. Okay. So as you're watching, let's do a little breathing, a little relaxation so we can get ready for bed or for the rest of our day. Can you hold up a finger and smell the flower? And blow out the candles. Smell the flower. Blow out the candles. Smell the flower. Blow out the candles. And one more. Smell the flower. And blow out the candles. Very good, guys. I really enjoyed reading some poetry with you out of my absolute favorite, favorite childhood book. And I hope you enjoyed it too. And I don't know, I'm going to look, look this up and see if you can still get it. And on YouTube, I'll put a description, a link if you can still get it. And I'll do the same on Facebook. Can't do that for your Periscope, guys. But you can hop over to Facebook on Pumped Up Parenting and look it up. In the meantime, guys, as always, I'm going to go live this weekend to talk about my heart attack. And moms, women, you need to listen because what you think is what you can expect from a heart attack is not at all what women experience. So this is super important. Okay, so I'll see you tomorrow. I think I'm going to go live at 11 o'clock tomorrow, Eastern Time, a.m. So I'll see you tomorrow about that. Very important. Invite your friends. And in the meantime, guys, I wish you days filled with peace, love, and tons of laughter. It really is the best medicine. I'll see you here next time on Pumped Up Parenting in Periscope on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel for lots of great stuff. And I'll see you here tomorrow, guys. Everybody have a great night and a restful evening. Bye-bye.